immediately one to blow my own horn. But uh, by the way, if I could blow my own horn, I gotta believe I might be tempted to give it a try. <laughs> anyway, my thing is, uh, uh, when I finish up on this stage tonight, um, it will mark uh, quite an occasion. Seven years, almost to the minute, totally, 100%, comedy free. <laughs> Thoughts and prayers, please. Um, so, um, yeah, oh, Brian mentioned that I come up from Ohio. I've, you know, I've come up for the shows and for other things a lot. Usually pretty smooth sailing. Uh, but um, one of the times last year, I got stuck on I-96 behind a bad accident. And uh, it, it, it was up ahead between exits. We couldn't go anywhere. All lanes of traffic stopped for 90 minutes. Yeah. Here's the problem. On the way up, I drank an entire extra large coffee. So you know where this is going. Right there in broad daylight, cars on either side of me, I had to pee in the extra large Tim Hortons coffee cup. Um, not as easy as you might think, by the way, uh, especially for me. Uh, well, the first thing is the steering wheel is in the way. You know, that's one problem. And the other problem is I don't, I don't quite have the, uh, how should I say this? Length? Length. I don't have the length to get it all the way to where it needs to go. So. As I'm sitting there, I'm thinking about how much I envy all of those guys who go through their whole life without this particular limitation that, that I have. I mean, but just think about, for example, just about any NBA basketball player does not have this problem. I was reading about this one player, he's seven foot one, wears a size 23 shoe. And you know what they say? That means he has a huge pair of shoes. <laughs> I gotta believe if that guy ever gets stuck in traffic, has to pee in a coffee cup, forget the steering wheel. The only thing in his way is gonna be the brake pedal. <laughs> um, all old comics tonight, that's pretty cool. That's fine, I like to see them. But I'll tell you what, I really like doing shows with the younger comics because I learn stuff from them. You know, it helps keep me young. It's not working, but... <laughs> um, yeah, I learned stuff from them. I was uh, standing at the back of the room one night, I was waiting to go on, and the young comic who was on stage ahead of me used a term that I had never heard before. He was talking about his pull-out game. Okay, Eva knows what that is. Would you like to explain why? Yeah, so some people realize he was talking about the earliest method of birth control, the one that requires lightning fast decision making. That one? I had no idea. So I did what you do, I Googled it, and I read just enough to learn that I don't have one. As a matter of fact, at my age, my pull-out game has become more of a fallout game. <laughs> so, um, as you've heard from Brian, my name is Ed, and like all the comedians out here tonight, I'd appreciate it if you'd remember it. It's pretty simple, it's just two letters, okay? Unfortunately for me, the two letters are E-D. <laughs> Can I tell you how convenient it is to have a guy my age have his name be the same as his medical condition? <laughs> I've reached the age where I started to get uh, age-appropriate uh, older adult 
targeted spam emails, you know. And so uh, I got one uh, recently. The subject line was, you might have ED if you have these two symptoms. Look, I'm not a doctor. I was always under the impression there was one symptom. <laughs> I mean, look, it's not that hard. Oh wait, that's the second symptom. Yeah. Why didn't I think of that? So I get the, the other emails I get are from this company that's trying to sell me this fancy men's underwear. You know, there's the real tight boxer briefs. I don't know why they're sending it to me. But uh, here's the thing. The pictures in the ads, I know women know exactly what I'm talking about. The pictures in the ads, of course they have very attractive men, I think, because you can't really see the guy because the pictures focus in on where the action is in front of the underwear, and it's, you know, close up, and in, in, in front of the underwear there's this big uh, bulge. Yeah, this huge bulge, see? It, it's like this big, it's like this big pouch. What the hell are you supposed to put in there? Spare socks? I don't know. What else do you need to know? Oh, my girlfriend dumped me. Jeez, thanks. Ah, uh, look, I should have seen that one coming. I should have known. Yeah, she said she couldn't handle the 20-year uh, age difference. She was 89. <laughs> so obviously, I'm single. Um, you know, it's, it's difficult to meet the, the right woman. That's difficult. I was talking to a woman uh, a while back. I thought it was going great. We're laughing, we're joking, we're having a good time. Uh, when all of a sudden she asked me if I wanted to be her sugar daddy. <laughs> Take a look at my bank account, sweetheart. <laughs> That's not a sugar daddy bank account. <laughs> More like sweet and low, <laughs> daddy. Where, where am I? Did I do pull-out game? Did I, oh, I did that first. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm clueless about a lot of stuff uh, in my life. The drug business, the whole drug life is one thing. I never got caught up in that, and I'm glad uh, for that. I was at a comedy club one night, and the uh, young comic came up to me, and she said, uh, Hey, Ed, I just got my hands on some acid. Do you want to buy some? She was trying to sell me some LSD. Uh, and look, I can't blame her. I realize I give off that vibe. <laughs> no, it's not my thing. But, you know, I want to be helpful. I want to be one of the guys. So I said, uh, you know, absolutely. I will take some of that off your hands. And she said, great, how much do you want? And I said, well, look, I admit, you know, I'm just a beginner. So just... You know, why don't you just start me out with a pound? <laughs> that ought to do. Um, and something interesting happened to me a while back. Yeah, I got hit on by a guy. Now it's it's not significant that it was a guy. I don't I, I don't care about that, that. But the significant thing is I. What you see here in this fancy spotlight, looking at you right now, this right here got hit on by a human being. <laughs> so I was talking to this guy and he tells me that he's a building contractor, which is just great, because I was just getting ready to do some uh, home renovation, you know? So I thought, okay, seemed like a nice guy. So we exchanged phone numbers and that was that. A couple of days later, I get a text message from him. The text message says, hey, Ed, uh, why don't you come over to my place tonight? We'll have a couple of drinks and talk about how I can help with your project. And that's nice. That's nice. At the end of his text message, he used an emoji. Apparently, 
one of those emojis that has like two meanings? Yeah. The emoji he used was the eggplant. You know the eggplant? Eva, you know what I'm talking about? I had no idea. Uh, but I wanted to be uh, polite, so I sent him back my own emoji. I shot him back one of these. <laughs> I, uh, I found out something about myself that night. <laughs> I found out exactly how far I would go just to get my kitchen remodeled. <laughs> so, uh, oh, oh, by the way, uh, my next project at home, I'm, I want to put a new deck on my house, so uh, if you think you'd like to help out, <laughs> let's talk. <laughs> See, what is this, May? So it was in March, I finished up my annual physical. Doctor did a bunch of tests, you know, and, and one of the tests he did was for testosterone. And he tells me the testosterone uh, level measures your uh, 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 sex drive, or lack thereof. I'll be okay. Uh, yeah, so when he said when it's, uh, when it's low, they call it low T. And he said, I got some bad news for you, Ed, you got low T. Well, here's the problem with me having low T. You see, I got a small D. <laughs> and when you combine my low T with my small D, I ain't getting no P. <laughs> I don't know. Um, what other test? He did another test. What's the test they do for your prostate? Oh, PSA test. Yeah, he did the PSA test. And uh, it was a blood test. Apparently the results came back kind of high because uh, he said, well, uh, Ed, uh, I'm sorry, you're gonna have to bend over. I'm gonna have to physically examine your prostate. Not one of my favorite things. Actually, no, this one turned out okay because now my doctor is going to build my new deck. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Enjoy the rest of the show. Congratulations to Brian D. I once saw a younger comic. He was in his 20s, and he said, hey, his grandma was in the audience. He goes, hey, grandma, you got to shut your ears now. I'm going to do some dick jokes. <laughs> and I'm like, really? First of all, if grandma didn't know what a dick was, you wouldn't be here, A. B, the average grandma now 76 years old and makes her 21 in 1967, the summer of love. I mean, she also saw the rise of the birth control pill and the rise of the pornographic industry. I'm not saying his grandmother blew off four members of Led Zeppelin in one night. I'm saying the woman who did is now a grandmother, so. <laughs> Somebody got that one late. <laughs> Really? Was it all four members? <laughs> well, on the subject of rock music, uh, my daughter got a new car. She's calling me up bragging about it. She said, hey, you know what they did? They threw in a year worth of satellite radio. But Dad, I got a question for you. I understand why Tom Petty gets his own radio station. I understand why Bruce Springsteen gets his own radio station. But who are the Grateful Dead? <clears throat> and as I'm explaining it to her, I realized it was the same exact explanation my dad gave me when I asked him why Lawrence Welk had his own TV show. <laughs> yeah, the Grateful Dead is to our kids what Lawrence Welk was to us. And I told this to my friend, he's like, no way, dude. I'm like, check it out. They both were great live. Both their audiences love to get hammered before the show. Lawrence is on Champagne, the Grateful Dead on whatever they can find in the parking lot. And they both only had one top 10 single. The Grateful Dead is Lawrence Welk, ladies and gentlemen. Deal with it. They just went out in a more glorious fashion. Yeah, it is, right? Uh, since I'll stick with the theme tonight, it's not easy, Green. 
uh, growing old. I've got back pain. Anybody else? I have a slipped disc. Anybody else ever have that? Yeah, that's, that's painful. And I was at rehab downtown, and as I come out of rehab, I'm walking out of there. It's raining out. I got an old jacket on. I'm hunched over like this. I got my backpack hanging, and I get to the corner of one, where 131 empties out onto Pearl Street, and I'm waiting there, and a lady gets out of her car, comes over and hands me $5. <laughs> She thinks I'm homeless. So I did what any red-blooded American would do. I spent it on malt liquor in honor of the sentiment. I don't know if you guys have ever had uh, Old English. Anybody ever drink that? Yeah. Here's my review. It tastes like gasoline mixed with sugar. It pairs very well with crack, is what it does. It pairs very well with crack. But uh, while I was at therapy, uh, the nurse who was treating me gave me this weird saying, and I've heard it before in America, where you've been injured, and she says, oh, you poor soul, I wouldn't wish that upon my worst enemy. Really? You don't have the names of like three people you throw back pain on? Give me a fucking break. <laughs> I got at least 20 people I'd wish that on. Good God. I hate sayings like that. I hate sayings. There's another one. This guy died the other day. He fell off a mountain. He was a renowned mountain climber. He fell 800 feet to his death off Mount Everest. And the headline was, uh, his kids say at least he died doing something he loved. <laughs> if I die doing something, if I'm doing something I love, I don't want to die! <laughs> this idea was first pushed on me in high school when a, a friend of mine showed me an article in a newspaper about an 80-year-old man who died fucking a 29-year-old woman. And he said, at least he died doing something he loved. And I'm like, okay, was he allowed to finish? And have you no compassion for the poor woman who had to push a pasty white old man off of her, <laughs> call 911, and then participate in the worst walk of shame ever in the history of mankind? <laughs> I'd like to see somebody die, if I ever was to die doing something, I want to die doing something I hate, right? We've all been in situations like that. Maybe we didn't mean it, but at least one time in your life, you were in a situation where you're just like, fucking shoot me now. <laughs> I was at a table with two lawyers, my ex-wife, and they were in an argument over how to spend my money, and I wanted to die a fucking cartoon death. I wanted a giant anvil to drop on me. <sighs> or have the roadrunner come up behind me and go beep beep and then fall off a cliff. <sighs> I always love that part of the roadrunner, right? The fall off the cliff. It's a beautiful thing. Very famous person died doing something he hated. You guys know that? President Lincoln did not want to go to the theater that night. Rumor has it that as John Wilkes Booth stepped over him, he said, thank you. That place sucked. Another saying I hate, you hear it a lot in political arguments. Well, that's a slippery slope, Jojo. That's a slippery slope. Ever want to end a political argument? Ask him what that means. That's a slippery slope. What do you mean by that? Well, if we start doing what you want to do, Jojo, we can slide down the slippery slope. Okay, how slippery is it? Was it an all-night rain or just an overnight dew? Because I think I can get back up if it's an overnight dew. Also, what was the slope like? Was it like 5 degrees? Was it like 30? I can climb back up from a 5 degree slope, right? I hope I got my physics right. Am I, do I have my physics right? Now? The higher the degree, right, the harder it is to get up? You don't know? Okay. I don't think anybody in this room does, so we're good. <laughs> anyway. That ended the argument. He's like, oh, you're going to question me on that. I did, I did, I want to leave you tonight with a story because I saw this come across my internet feed uh, from a friend of mine, and I had to share it with somebody. <laughs> and so I thought I'd share it with you. This is a true story about Bridget Watkins. Uh, let me read this to you. Bridget Watkins, 43, of Pasadena, Maryland, who allegedly took fawns into her home and raised the deer with the intention of training them to attack hunters, was taken into custody Friday. On 
honest to God, that seems like a good idea, and I actually know some hunters who would like to be challenged in that way, but how do you think she taught those deer to hate hunters? Do you think it was behavioral modification? Oh no. At the time of her arrest, Watkins was in possession of several grams of methamphetamine, four deer, and many stolen and broken electronics. Attention was drawn to Watkins when she began giving meth to the young deer, and they were caught rummaging through people's garages and back porches. <laughs> I love how the deer, once drug addicted, do the same thing humans do when they're drug addicted. We'll start stealing shit. A homeowner followed one of the deer back to Watkins' house in an attempt to recover his property. He found himself face to face with Watkins, who was wearing only a duct tape bikini. and disassembling his clock radio. <laughs> Charges are pending further investigation by the Anne Arundel County Police Department, Eastern District. I don't know about you guys, but that story is totally methed up. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, thanks for coming out. My name is JoJo. some of you sweet young things out there, and I know exactly what you're thinking. Oh look, an old lady. <laughs> yeah. If we wanted to listen to Grandma, we'd go home and call her on her landline, wouldn't we? <laughs> Better yet, send her an email on her AOL account, and that way you wouldn't have to listen to her at all. Win-win. <laughs> so I, I look out and I say, thank you, thank you again, bless your hearts, but you know what? Fuck you. <laughs> yeah. I want you to know, I want you to know I'm just as funny as all those young comics that are out there, not necessarily tonight, we are all old, but I'm just as funny as all those young comics out there and I look out and I see some sweet young things out there and I'm thinking, really, I'm no different than you. In fact, just like you, I still have a little visitor every month too, except I actually look forward to mine. It's called a social security check. Yeah, I'm still even on the pill but I take mine to prevent unwanted heart attacks. So I'm old, I am a grandmother also, yeah. And I'm, I have to admit, I'm not one of those warm, fuzzy, ooh, love my grandchildren, you know. I have to sit and listen to all my friends talk about all the wonderful things they do. They bake and they go to concerts and plays and stuff like that. My standard for my grandchild is if that kid can make a Bloody Mary by the time they're seven, my work here is done. Yeah. So look, I'm old, I'm a grandmother, I'm also a widow, and I know exactly what you're thinking, but I was acquitted, so <laughs> it's official. And it, it, it's not easy being a widow in today's world. I went out to buy a new car recently and the car salesman said to me, oh, can I interest you in this little four-door SUV? And I said, well, actually, I'd like to look at that little convertible over there. And he said, oh, will the mister be joining us? I said, only if you brought a shovel. <laughs> what difference does it make? But I'll admit, I, I miss having a man in my life, so I asked some of my young friends, where do you go nowadays to find a man? And they said, oh, whatever you do, don't go to a bar. All they are are meat markets. I said, there are meat markets out there? Because right now, my life consists of one long vegan potluck, and half the people there are lactose intolerant. I wouldn't mind shopping for a good beef tenderloin. <laughs> Just point me in the right direction. But, but seriously, where does a woman my age go to find a man? I tried funeral luncheons, but, but even by my standards, it was too soon. <laughs> I, I tried nursing homes, but I found the families got a little prickly when they found a strange woman sitting next to the old guy's bedside, fond fondling his wallet. I'm in his hand, his hand, I'm in his hand. Then it occurred to me, I know where there are thousands of men that would find me hot, but prisons have such strict rules, and those guys go out even less than I do, so 
that wasn't going to work. So yes, what was left, even at my advanced age, that vast black hole in the cyber universe where the last shred of your self-esteem goes to commit suicide, <laughs> online dating. So I go online and it says to post a picture and a profile. So I'm sorting through all of my naked selfies. <laughs> yeah, you laugh, I don't have nearly as many as I used to. Apparently Siri turned me into the FBI. <laughs> Who knew you couldn't store senior porn in the cloud? <laughs> so I, I finally find a picture, and then it said to post a profile, and to be honest in the profile. So I wrote, strong independent woman, seeks intelligent man for stimulating conversations, afternoons at museums, evenings at the theater, gourmet dinners. I got no hits whatsoever. So I thought, well, I'll change that up a little bit. So I wrote, quiet, demure gal, seeks big, strong, take charge, man of the house type guy. I love to cook, I love to clean, I love to swallow, and I love to do laundry. Suddenly I had a hundred hits. <laughs> Who knew all those guys wanted their laundry done? But you should see some of the stuff these guys are posting. You have 80-year-old men posting pictures of themselves without their shirts on. And I'm thinking, Walter, you're confused. When women talk about abs, they want to see a six-pack, not a keg. Put your shirt back on, Walter. And, and, the, and the things they write in their profiles, this one guy wrote, lonely Jen, just buried my third wife. I thought, well, gee, that makes me want to run right out there and become wife number four. But uh, yeah, but I, I, I've had a little bit of luck with the online dating, and I, I, this is a true story. Even I could not have made this one up. I was texting with this one guy for a couple days, and I thought, whoa, he shows promise. He can spell. Two, 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 there, there, there. He got them all right. I was picking out China patterns. But we're, we're sitting there texting one night, and he said, before we go any further, there's probably something you should know. And I thought, oh, great, you're the guy with the three dead wives. I said, oh, and he said, I'm not circumcised. Now, Call me old-fashioned, but isn't that something you would say for, I don't know, the second or third date? Or, how about never? <laughs> anyway, so I said, oh? And he said, yeah, actually I'd be curious to know your thoughts on male genital mutilation. I said, well, I guess it would all depend on what you did to piss me off. <laughs> I did not hear from him again. So I'm going to leave you sweet young things out there who are dating at 25 to tell you it's really not that much different when you're dating at 75 like I am. For example, at 25, you wonder if he drives one of those cool electric pickups. At 75, you wonder if he can drive at night. <laughs> at 25, you're concerned he may have a little student loan debt. At 75, you're concerned he may have a reverse mortgage. At 25, you, when you get ready to go out, you shave your legs. At 75, you shave your chin. And at 25, you're on the pill. At 75, he is. I'm Kathy Ryan, thank you.